And welcome back to the greatest podcast in all of space and all of time. I am live here with Nima Meridi, the Ninja Realtor, and we're back in the house. It's been a short hiatus, mm-hmm. but we're back. We're large and in charge. Large and in charge. You were down in Vegas recently. My brother saw you at the Mandalay Bay. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. I, I hear my name. And I, 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 I kind of looked the other way like, oh, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know who it was. You and got then, fans, bro, in different states. Nah, they're they're just friends I haven't met yet. Well, like, actually, I've met your brother a couple times. His brother's awesome. Then it was a guy that, in Atlanta that stopped you at the airport. He goes, "Hey, I know you from your podcast." And now uh, you were walking around the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, beautiful Las Vegas, and you got stopped there too. It it's it's happened once or <laughs> twice. Like people like there's some people that recognize the show and they're like, "Oh, man, I really like your podcast." And my answer is usually like, "Why?" No, mm. no I'm kidding. It's, I'm really appreciative of it. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I have a lot of fun making these. I really enjoy it. Um, it's just kind of an extension of training, extension yeah. of jujitsu, just another way to uh, kind of make friends and new training partners I haven't met yet and stuff. But it's pretty awesome, man. I'm very like humbled by it. I don't know what else to how else to really describe it, but no, it's it's actually uh, Las Vegas is two weeks ago, so basically uh, starting at Pans, I was down there, um, it was, so three weeks ago, came back. And then just a few days after that, I was in Las Vegas. Uh, it was my birthday and had some uh, things to attend to. Mm-hmm. And then I had to go to my, my cousin's wedding this past weekend in Los Angeles. So it was literally uh, a loop of, you know, San Jose to LA to San Jose to Vegas to San Jose to, you know, uh, Los Angeles again. Actually, like further southeast of then Los Angeles. Like once that, once we got to the grapevine, it was still another 150 miles, which uh, yeah, that's some distance. And we, we drove that one. So that was, that was kind of a trek. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's good times. I just want to be home for a little bit though. Uh, just kind of get back into a routine here, uh, training at the, the places I normally train with yeah. the people I normally train with. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've gotten out there and mixed it up and gotten weird enough lately. I kind of just want to be home and hanging out with the dog and kicking it and stuff, you know? Yeah, totally. I mean, as I said, there's no place at home. And so it was nice to be able to go get out in different uh, cities, different states and train at different gyms and see people that you know from different areas, right? Network and build rapport. But it's also nice to get back home and right, get back to work. And you're like, all right, man, I've been working, uh, <laughs> working remotely for a while. It's time for my boss to see me at the office again. Yeah, it's it's good to it's good to sort of hit the reset button sometimes and get mm-hmm. back into the groove, the old uh, the routine. Um, man, a, a lot of stuff has happened recently, right? You know, Pans was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, had a, had a really good time, sort of hanging out down there. Um, Las Vegas is usual as Las Vegas. Uh, it, it's I'm not really on the strip doing much there, but uh, you know, it, it was still a good time. I. I uh, I wound up renting an SS Camaro, but not on purpose. <laughs> I always, I'm really good at doing the, like the coupon codes of the rental car companies. And I tried to use Turo this time, that kind yeah. of Airbnb car thing. But this time it was way more expensive. So I just hit up Avis. And uh, usually when I buy my plane ticket, they like, there's some rental car coupon that, you know, they, they, they oh, send yeah. me after the fact. Yeah. And I have my, uh, my kind of points thing, you know, what the, the rewards for, you know, with the different rental car companies. So I'll sit there and I'll mess with the different coupon codes. I'll, you know, look them up on Google or whatever, Mm -hmm. look through your email for, you know, you know, they always advertise at you and stuff. And I managed to come away with four for like four days. If you paid prepaid, I think I paid a total of like a hundred dollars for an SS Camaro. I mean, I think I asked for the, the full size car. I was trying to get a regular, you know, four door thing. Cause I'm not going to sit there and rent a Camaro as, wouldn't do it. Just didn't seem very practical. Like it, it, it I yeah. just never really wanted to do it. But um, they ran out of regular cars, and of course, you know, well, we have this nice convertible for you, sir. It's you know, if you, if you want a convertible, and went out there, and you know, it's a five hundred horsepower, you know, thing rear- rocket. The back seats, uh, the back of the front seats actually touch them just anyway. They're just, I think, they're just there for insurance purposes, just mm-hmm. like. To, to say it's a four seater, so the, you know, it's a cheaper insurance rate. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're welcome. It's really a two seater. I, I can't imagine safely putting adults in the backseat of that thing. I can imagine Bailey just running shotgun, like, whoa, snap, where are we going? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty fast car. I mean, uh, it has the, uh, the, all these different settings for traction control. And I think 
it has a track mode, a sport mode, and a couple other things. Mm. And I figured out how to get it in track mode with the uh, the traction control off. And it has the uh, it's like an eight speed paddle shifter on the on the column. And I've never been in a rental car before where it was actually legitimately pretty fast. Like mm -hmm. normally they'll, they have governors on them to make sure you don't go too fast. Like you're not supposed to be able to rev the engine past a certain thing. Like, you know, notice rental cars, like they, they're real restricted. Right. Yeah. You know, there's like a, there's pro, I'm pretty sure there's like computer programming in there, you know, so it's, you know, people aren't going out beating the shit out of their cars but uh and getting into like high speed chases with law enforcement or something in the las vegas desert yeah pretty much any of that stuff so, but this thing yeah that that was not found i mean this this car was fast and you can go real fast in it and i didn't see it you know being restricted in any way by any kind of programs or whatever so um i didn't need all that car for what i was doing i'm just basically driving back and forth yeah you know to some gyms in my mom's house and stuff but, but um, hey you get to roll in style yeah definitely it's uh it's funny though i try to put the convertible top down and it the trunk kind of folds up and out and the you you wind up getting half of your trunk space taken off whenever you bring the convertible top down because it kind of hides oh it. right it yeah. like hides it in the trunk kind of thing it's pretty cool like it looks like a transformer when it's doing its thing but um yeah, it's uh, I can't imagine owning one. Um, but you know, just just to whip around a little bit, and when it's nice weather out in you know Las Vegas, it's just fine. But that was haul ass, huh? Especially when you, yeah, American yeah, muscle. It's supposed to be five hundred horsepower, which oh. is uh, kind of a lot. I, I can't imagine what this damn thing weighed though. It's uh, I'm I'm sure it was pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, just trying to get back in the grind of things. I had a pretty decent cold. I'm, I got over and now just like getting my chest and, you know, all the, the crap cleared out of it mm -hmm. so I can breathe properly on the mat. You got to use those cilia, man. You know, the cilia, those little hair like follicles. The hair like follicles? Just push it up. Yeah. What it does, they're almost like rowing action. They're all the way down like your, your esophagus. And then they just help push that, that mucus and phlegm up. And they literally, they, they operate like rowing, like rows, like, you know, when you row a boat, for example, and just pushes it up, and that's when you like, cough out stuff. FYI. <laughs> so the cilia gets rid of the mucus and the phlegm. Mm -hmm. gets, gets everything out there, yeah. Where do you get that? Um, um, it's actually created inside you. It's, uh, it's endo androgynous. Androgynous? Androgynous, I guess that's the right word. Intrinsic, yeah. Intrinsic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cilia is like these little hairs, and it just push stuff up. Hmm. And is there a particular technique in order to to do all this stuff? I mean, like, yeah, you do that. <laughs> like oh, that. so you're saying to kind of cough? Yeah, you just kind of you, you just bring it up. So it's like the the work in an overload. What you basically just told the listeners is to clear your throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're silly. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now I know the technical term for what yeah. I've been trying to do the last two weeks. I told you I dropped out of medical school, right? You know, once upon a time I was there. I went, I lasted a year. I, I, I learned a few things, this being one of them. So it could have been the ninja gynecologist. Right? The ninja gynecologist. That's it. It, it's it's got to be better than yeah. the ninja proctologist or the ninja um, urologist. Yeah, yeah. I like I like ninja realtor better than all of those things. But it, it, it's kind of interesting just to know, like... When people ask me, like sometimes they'll ask me at my open house, says, hey, what did you major in in college? And I say, interesting enough, molecular and cell biology. So, you know, no, I'm a realtor. That makes sense, right? Like, how did that happen? Like, that's a whole other story. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, you can maybe do both somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, uh, I'll operate on you. And then uh, you need a house? You need a house? You need to sell a house? I got you on that, too. There you go. That would be so, like, Iranian of me. Like, one like oh like you need a loan i got you on that used car okay put it on my lot oh you need to buy a house too yeah i, I can show it to you after i sell your car <laughs> you're also an attorney and i'm yeah i'm also an attorney exactly <laughs> exactly you're uh you got a notary public which is just of course you do yeah 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 wait are you actually a notary public i'm not too? a notary public but you know my dad was actually my dad for a while was a notary public i think my mom might have been your mom too i think so at some point yeah Really you got to diversify, brother, right? You got to diversify. I mean, this is why we make the LLCs. We make the S-Corps under our names, right? We can a jack of uh, many trades. But you don't want to be like that guy, like how the saying goes, jack of many, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Exactly. Yeah. What's the... Uh, 
what's the latest you saw gary tonin's uh mma victory last week right i did i did yes yes and then uh someone something else that i sent to another one one of your um fellow black bait stable mates black belt stable mates vu tran i sent him uh martin Nguyen. I, I didn't know there was a vietnamese guy in in the uf i'm uh, sorry in in mma but oh, i yeah. one in one fc Oh, I'm sure there's more than one in one FC. Yeah. He um, trains out of Australia, who told me. There's um well, you know, one FC is a pretty big promotion, man. They uh they put a lot of money mm. into the production of those shows. There's, it's really big down there on Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah. Um How did Gary Tonin end up I mean, did they just offer him a boatload of money? Like, yeah. hey, come to Southeast Asia, we'll pay you a million dollars a fight. You know, well, something uh, like that. What about what's his name? Funky. Um uh Ben damn it. Ben Askren. Ben Askren. Funky Ben Askren. He's in one FC really? too, isn't he? Yeah. He's a he's like a lifer yeah. there. Uh, but see, he had some he had some issues with UFC, remember? <laughs> and he left and Dana White and him got into something and I thought he never actually fought in UFC. I don't know. I don't think but he did. I thought he was supposed to at least. I'm not sure if he ever did or not. You better <clears> than me. But I, I, I do remember Dana White saying actually something pretty funny on Twitter. He said, Ambien takes Ben Askren to go to sleep. And this was a knock on on your wrestlers. Sorry, David Mitchell. Uh, wrestlers <clears throat> and being boring in, in MMA, apparently. That's what Dana White thought of Ben Askren. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think he's got some personality to him. He's a pretty charismatic guy for being that boring, right? I thought so, too. I've heard I, him on podcasts before. I thought he was good, and he seems like a very intellectual guy. Yeah. And he just um, he gives back a lot, and he just has this huge passion for grappling and wrestling, and he coaches. And, in fact, he said, which I didn't know, that he was – planning on just being like a high school or college wrestling coach. Nice. And uh, he decided to go to the MMA route to make some extra coin. You know, he seems pretty reasonable. I mean, yeah. I, I have no reason. I mean, he, uh, I remember when CM Punk was, you know, joining up over at uh, Duke Rufus's spot. And that's, you know, obviously where Ben Askren trains. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, at first, you know, he seemed pretty skeptical of it. But after he got to know him, he's, like, he's actually a regular guy. He's out here. He's grinding. He's, you know, he's working like everybody else. And yeah. so he, he seemed, you know, like a pretty reasonable guy and he was, he's really talented um and i mean you got to be a good wrestler to be successful in mixed martial arts i believe yeah, yeah i yeah. mean you, you've got to have you know it, it at least some of it um you know the the conditioning these guys has um you, you think about like kids you know with, with all this you know bullying stuff you hear about in schools it's like put your kid in wrestling yeah then just the ain't a bully no more it's just not um they work harder man the 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 grind you learn you know in you know in, in amateur wrestling it's insane i think so too like i'm big on that about combat sports wrestling or jujitsu like from a young age I, I i'm attracted to it because there's not much striking so i don't have to worry about those types of things right affecting I don't know. Like, like hit wrong, you know what I mean? But as a Persian dude, like genetically, like your yeah. wrestling's kind of your thing, right? Yeah. It's I like guess I was just nature. like the, one of those weirdos that like never went into it. <laughs> my even my dad, when I was uh, young, my dad was like, go to re do wrestling, do wrestling, and I wasn't into it. I'm like, I want to do striking. Your I, dad was a wrestler. Pops was a wrestler. Yeah. That's I mean, I watched badass. the Bruce Lee and Jet Li movies, right? And I'm like, ah, oh, well, I want to do that. Like, I want to strike. I want to freaking kick someone in the head. And that's why I went down that way. But I mean, had I done it differently, I never would have gone into like soccer and football. Let's say in high school, I would have done wrestling. Yeah, man. Um, I would have taken it way more seriously at a younger age, uh, knowing what I know now. I mean, uh, the, the base you you get to build for yourself, just the conditioning, um, way it changes your body, man, that callus, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you, you want that when you're normal is that grind. I mean, yeah. just the, the tank, the gas tank you'll have on you for everything else, the, the don't quit you'll have the, the, just the, the determination, right? So it's that the training, just getting the, the process of getting good at it is just, it's it's so much in terms of like character building yeah. you know and then just building your 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 body from the inside out i don't think there's anything better um jiu jitsu obviously even for competition right i mean because they compete so much wrestlers yeah yeah um and it, it translates really well to what we do um it translates really really well and i i feel like in jiu jitsu um you know we're we're constantly defending i mean so more so now you're seeing 
the legs being defended than ever before. Mm -hmm. But traditionally, we're just kind of defending our, our, our upper extremities, like our neck, our, you know, collars, whatever, and arms, elbows, shoulders, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the, the legs the, aren't being defended the same way like a wrestler would, right? So, I mean, we sprawl because we sprawl, but, you know, just the, uh, the, the act of actually defending your legs, like in, in Spider Guard, if you know how to defend your legs, like you shouldn't be swept basically ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just, I just feel like you learn a lot. Yeah. I, and speaking of guards, I really liked what we worked on t today. That's a position mm -hmm. that, I, that, I, that I find myself in a lot from half guard and your, your, um, your partner stands up and you shoot for that. What is, so it's like a reverse De La Hiva to back take, right? Yeah, it's it, call it. it's not quite an, an Imanari role, but I mean, you're basically taking the back from between the legs, like you're taking you're you're in reverse or in reverse De La Hiva, basically. Um, you take your cross hand to the back of the uh, the the De La, the leg that's in the De La Hiva, the, mm -hmm. the, hook, the hooked leg, right? Mm -hmm. And you're kind of spinning underneath to the back take. And uh, you can take them down a few different ways. I mean, if it's gi versus no gi, you have the belt as an option. You can sit them down on their butt, or you can launch them kind of forward the way we're doing it today. Yeah. So would you? So that's not quite a Baron Bolo, huh? Because no. I'm sorry no. for all the ju people who are like casually into jujitsu and not like really deep into it. I don't mean to be boring, but it because a Baron Bolo would be a full roll, right? And we're kind of doing a half. Locking into the back of the knees and taking them down. No, you're just, you're just, uh, you're doing kind of a little, not even really an inversion. You're just spinning underneath them. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's uh -huh. it's really all you're doing. You're leading with your with your hand, kind of. So if you go head first, it, your 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 shoulders are going to block the way for your hand to get through. Okay. Right. We just, yeah. I like those little daring moves, man. I, I always <clears> like to shoot for those. So, so it was really applicable to me. I liked it a lot. I mean, it's it's all on timing, right? And how you set that up, and mm -hmm. you kind of want to mess with their base a little bit. Um, if you kind of, if you can take your uh, the, the, your your the other leg, the one that isn't hooking his uh, his leg, you can kind of mess with them a little bit. But you know, it's it's it is daring. It's timing, right? Mm -hmm. Who we, who's up now? We got EBI going. Tatsusara. An older EBI. Yeah. Older. An oldie, but a goodie, as they say. Man. Oh, is that, uh, what's the name, Gordon Ryan? Yeah. With your boy, John Donaher. Is that? Uh, Donaher, Death Squad. I saw that man in the corner. Seems like a cool guy. I you know, I'm really happy that they have these EBIs on Fight Pass. Sometimes when I'm getting my run on in the morning, if I'm doing it on the treadmill, Watching a little EBI is always an awesome thing to do. Man, someone's outside smoking a cigarette. It's annoying. You got the the back door of the uh, Casa Cronin over here open with the screen door and everything. It's a nice day. I wanted to get a little air in the place, but mm -hmm. someone's out there smoking a cigarette. It's bad for you. You shouldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, kids, don't smoke cigarettes. There's too many people in the world, though, maybe. So, as you were saying about, I'm sorry to interrupt, as you were saying about Gary Tonin, about 1FC, um, I immediately started thinking about your boy Jake Shields and how we, we grapple with him, we train with him, and how much of a freaking world beater that guy is. But he was helping Gary a lot with his striking before this fight, right? I think so. I think so. I saw something on, on social yeah, media for it. Yeah, he's he's out there now. I mean, he's, he moved to New York, and he's mm -hmm. doing the, the Donaher Death Squad thing, or the just, just training at Henzo's with Donaher, uh, you know, full-time now. So that's awesome yeah. for, for him. I mean, it's I think it's a really good fit. Um, it's, he's just it's a great coach, very cerebral, right? Very uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's, like, very deliberate. Um, it, it's cool having that academic kind of uh, perspective on things. You can kind of really – you know, break down how things are going and um, yeah. you know, have like a scientific approach to it, you know, as as opposed to like being very reactive. And very much so. And listen, John Donaher, if you're listening, I love you very much, but man, your posts are like novels. <laughs> yeah, they're very, the, the oh, the Instagram posts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I try to read them at the red light, but it turns green before I finish. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you, you, these are not in the car things like you, you take you look at the photos and they're usually pretty cool pictures you know he's got the gsp and stuff on yeah there and, yeah um someone winning something and then there's some very thoughtful long um like it's a very thoughtful message mm -hmm. you can tell you he put some thought into it um 
you know, I, I, I enjoyed that, uh, the Joe Rogan experience and his posts in general. I think he's pretty insightful. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the wearing a rash guard out in public is like regular clothes is kind of odd, but, um, <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. When, when I go to the, uh, you know, the, the, to the gym or anything like when, when it's, and it's like very casual, you know, gym wear, um, my daily outfits actually pretty similar. It's funny. Um, so, well, mine, when I, when I go lift or anything like that, I uh, just go to just regular gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, my outfit is, um, sweatpants, um, sneakers, obviously. And then, uh, I wear compression shorts under them just cause if I'm doing any cardio, like I got some thighs on me, I'm not trying to, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not trying to no chafe. Chafing. You don't need to chafe. not trying to chafe. Yeah. And then, um, I used to wear a tank top all the time, but, uh, underneath like, so I would, then I, I moved from doing that to a, a rash guard all the time. And then I wear like a zip up hoodie, a hooded jacket, like uh, on top of that, uh, headphones and a uh, ball cap, like, you know, whatever with the fanny pack. I get that. That is very Clinton actually. Yeah. I, and the sneakers are always designer. They're like, the, like Jordan's Yeezy, something like that. No, the, right? Like I, I wear, um, the to, latest of something. No, for the gym. Um, mm-hmm. I wear, I, if I'm doing any kind of power lifting, it's the, the Chuck Taylors, the, the high top, the old school, like black and white you know, the, the original yeah. Chuck Taylor converse. But if there's like cardio stuff involved or just like, like real active kind of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, moving around, right. Any more any dynamic work. I don't know what the hell you want to call it. Um, stuff where I'm moving around a lot. You know, just, portal. Yeah. Movement coach. And then I use the uh, Adidas ultra boost uncaged. Mm-hmm. They're the most comfortable shoes on earth. They have like that prime knit, but the bottom is that boost stuff, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is basically like we're walking on really happy marshmallows. Nice. So it's like, I like that happy marshmallow. They're like, they're like, happy. And like if you're on a treadmill, uh-huh. it like each step bounces you into the next one. It makes you want to run more because it kind of does it for you. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. It's really nice. Uh, they're Adidas Ultra Boost. Um, there's the ones that have like this plastic cage uh-huh. that has like kind of an extra structure for it. Yeah, yeah. But then the uncaged ones, you don't, I've actually, uh, so I like I've thrown them in the washer before, like clean them and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I realized you don't actually need the laces in them to wear them. Oh wow! And you can like I'm probably not going to run without tying them, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's like an elastic like sock thing, so you can just do just about everything except for like performance sort of athletics yeah. without the laces at all, and you're fine. Every anytime you're like cleaning, power lifting, or like let's say you're doing some running on a treadmill or even outside, do you ever wear those shoes that look like gloves? Oh, the five fingers now. Yeah. Now, I mean, there's guys that are really into them, but honestly, I'm I'm not a big, I'm not like a hobbyist or like serious runner, obviously. Mm. And I think that's really more of like a running enthusiast thing. So it, it doesn't help with, with um, let's say your your posture. I don't know if someone ever told me that if it was just with running or that too. But they, <clears throat> but they say like, you know, we weren't designed to wear these big thick soles on our shoes or whatever and you know we say well we, we were from comfort right but they say if you really want to get like the best optimized workout like let's say do your cleans with one with wearing those or or run with wearing those because like the way you run for example on the balls of your feet when you wear those is better for your your joints and your knees so th- this is um basically the ar- same argument that barefoot runners make mm-hmm. and this is the compromise this is people that don't want to be out in public in bare feet that want some protection, but still want to actually feel like you have their feet in their natural sort of splayed out position, getting the, you know, the, uh, the type of traction and connection with the earth that you would get if you were running barefoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. We were born without shoes. We were also born without Priuses. (laughs) I'm doing just fine without a Prius. Touche. So, I mean, I'm kidding. I, I don't give a fuck if you drive a Prius. Just don't hit my car with it. So we got some of the older EB, EBI fights going on right now, or matches, I should say. Mm-hmm. And um, so for absolutes, like what is that, like 195 and higher? No, absolute is open weight. It's just open weight, huh? So generally in a, uh, a tournament setting, you would win your division or medal in your division mm-hmm. at, like at all, right? Gold, silver, bronze, the extra bronze when there's four people on the podium, whatever. All of those people are eligible generally. Like, in, so let's say we're talking like an IBJJF style jiu jitsu tournament, mm-hmm. BJJ tour, what have you. Doesn't matter, right? Similar. 
all of those people can register for the absolute division. And at that point, that's when you see people like getting like double gold or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like this weekend, this like weekend. Guys, yeah. yeah. We had, we had some guys killing it. Um, Tyler Shu, a, uh, one world jitsu alum. Shu jitsu. Shu jitsu. And, uh, also he's been on this show too. Tai Tai, shout outs. TBS, AVP, yeah. Asian Boy Killer. That's it. With that's all, a lot of nicknames. All, that's a lot of nicknames. I, I didn't know any of those. <laughs> I just remember when he used to fall asleep in class, like standing up, and now he's, really, you know, he's like all grown up and like yeah. pretty, pretty good at jujitsu and good wrestler and stuff. So, yeah, yeah he got double gold this weekend at uh, Rumble in the Redwoods over at the Anza College. Double gold, uh, purple belt, and I'm um, guessing, what is it, like featherweight? I, I, don't, I don't know what weight it is. Maybe lightweight? Uh,. I think he's like in the sixties, early early sixties. Uh, so lightweight, lightweight. It's a one yeah, six one sixty seven five. Yeah, because yeah, he's gotten bigger. Um, yeah, yeah. Like he's adulting the now. Crossfit. Working on that adulting. Yeah, no, he's. I've actually seen him at uh, twenty four hour fatness the last two days in a row. Him and um, Gian. Oh, Gian Lee. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 over there. Uh, they were they were doing some uh, airdyne, you know, bike thing. And mm-hmm. yesterday I saw him. I was uh. I had my little battle station set up, so I had the uh, the squat rack set up with the you know the bar for deadlifts. So I'm like mm-hmm. doing some. I'm trying to recover from the sciatic nerve pinch shit. So I had a, I had a 45 on each side. I had a kettlebell, a yoga mat, and I was like, I'm doing the circuit between basically stretching, uh, you know, foam rolling, doing inverted stretches and stuff like that, you know, to kind of elongate the spine um, in between sets. But what I was basically doing was um, I would do 10 deadlifts. Uh, then I would, uh, drop down 20 push ups and then 20 kettlebell swings. And then I would do like, you know, foam roll or inverted stretch in between for a minute between sets. So you got your whole little circuit training set up going yeah, there. Yeah. Like I did that. like four or five of those in a row. And, yeah. and those guys were working on some, uh, some cleans and some front squats and stuff. Nice. And, and then, uh, uh, like, um, lunges with the bar loaded in the front. You know, every time I go to AKA San Jose, I do something like that too. So, you know, they have the, um, like the teardrop bag and the regular heavy bag and the ring. What I'll do is I'll pull one of those dummies in into one of the rooms because I go in the little white time room. You're like, come here, dummy. Yeah, come here, get over here. And then, um, so I'll, so in that way, you know, I can kind of work. I can wear my MMA gloves and I can work my striking um, from like let's say from mount or like side control and dropping elbows and just basically like your your ground and pound and transitions. Shoot, I practice my mount to triangle and if that doesn't work, you know, turn them around, things like that. So I'll work that. I got a little jump rope in station too. So then after that, because I have the bell going and I'll work that. And then I go to this medicine ball, it's 15 pound or 20 pound medicine ball and there's grips on the side, which is pretty cool. Thank you, Hav, for getting that for me. And then I'll just do the diamond touches, left and right, left and right, you know, shoot for that. And then I'll get in, in the ring I'll pick up these five pound dumbbells and I'll do some shadow boxing and that way, cause I don't lift. Right. But with those five pound dumbbells and what they do for me is they work those shoulders, you know, when I'm like throwing and stuff like that. So for me, it's practical. And I got my, my headphones going too. And I finally got Spotify premium. So I'm with the ads. And so I'm excited about that. Right. I'm like, I got a wicked playlist, bro. So I'm working that. And then, yeah. And then I'll jump out of the ring, the next bell and I'll just hit the bag and I just kind of go in this little circle. It's good stuff. Very nice. So you're off in one of those side rooms and that the, uh, are you upstairs or downstairs? Uh, downstairs. So if you go downstairs and where they have the Muay Thai room yep. and they have a ring, um, and there's a door and it closes and it's, it's insulated well too. So you can just like blast music. You know, nobody really messes with you. It's perfect. That's why I go down there. So I like it. I think that might be the one where we recorded the podcast with. Hava. It was, it was you, Hava and Alex. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because you guys are talking about it. I'm like, that's the room I always hang out in. Because <laughs> I listened to that episode, of course. Very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, the one we used with, uh, the, the one we did with uh, Justin Willis is, uh, I think, upstairs in like the, the top right corner. Oh, the wrestling room, like it was grayish? Yeah. And, and the uh, the one where we did this one was the, uh, it was downstairs in the far left corner of the building. Kind yes. Of. But yeah. the other side of, there's that center piece where mm-hmm. like how the lockers are kind of in the center. Yes. And there's like, you could be on the front or the back. I would, this was the front Okay. Cl- like closer to the office, kind of. I think like behind the office, if you had to look at it from like a bird's eye view. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's like it's it's a bigger building. That bottom left room, man, I, l- I like it a lot. I mean, just because they have the ring too. I mean, it's 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 pretty realistic. And sometimes I'll jump in there and I'll spot with some of the guys. I mean, you got the ropes right to work on. They'll corral you into a corner, mm-hmm. and you know, I mean, you could you could just get that feeling, you know, where you got your hands up and like you're just kind of blocking these shots and just how to like circle around and get out of it. You know what I mean? And counter back. So it's a very realistic training for striking i like it a lot unfortunately in our 
as much as I love our gym, and I do call it the little gym that could. Apparently, you guys had a boxing ring there back in the day. I didn't, I never you know, oh, wasn't around for that. Yeah, we, we had that ring for years. It was there from when the gym opened for yeah. years until just a few, like maybe just a couple ago. Um, I don't remember exactly when um, when Alex sold it or what did whatever. I, you know, I mean, I'm sure he sold it, but um, it just took up a lot of space. And Makes sense. Um, if you've ever you know put together a boxing ring or a wrestling ring or whatever you, you know like every once in a while you want to take it apart and kind of straighten out those boards and and you know retighten the ropes and everything mm -hmm. just uh, because the uh the way the canvas was set was um there were there were a couple of boards that were kind of like starting to overlap one another so you could you can get kind of hurt in there yeah if you if you didn't know where to step and stuff and it was. It needed to be adjusted. Like there was nothing wrong with the ring. It just it needed to be taken apart and adjusted a while ago. And just, he's like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> it just had. Yeah, and it wasn't used that much. Like just when the striking class would like, it would overflow. Yeah. And probably. you'd need you know one more space to you know for people to work out in. Um, I I'd, I'd like rolling up there. Yeah. It was fun. It's isolated, right? No one's gonna get in your way. I so I. I was well, I liked it because I was in you know training doing like the pro wrestling training at the time, so having the ring there was fun. Yeah. I could, the, like, oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I could go in there and no one's there and just work on like the falling like taking bumps is what they call it. Yeah. Like learning how to fall properly and I didn't have to go all the way to South San the South side of San Jose to do all that or like the East side where the gym moved to. I was just able to go there and just practice it, but it started to suck because that board thing was overlapped and yeah, um, you, you had to fall in the right place. Otherwise, you're gonna your back's gonna be all messed up. And, um, I so. wish we could have that stuff. It would have been cool, right? It would be cool to have some ropes like that where we can do live drills, realistic drills, or even a cage, right? Like a little bit of fencing where we can just kind of like we work have on that, that pressure. You have that one cage wall, but that thing ain't going to hold. Yeah, that's why. I, I didn't think that was going to hold either, but it's not. if we can have something <laughs> more sturdy, right, where you can just like, let's say where you can ram someone like me into the wall, and then I could like, you know, try to work on getting those underhooks and flipping around or whatever. I mean, yeah, we do have the um, well, the matted walls. Those mat The matted walls are there on purpose. For that. Yeah, I mean, that's it's not what, bad. If, yeah, yeah uh, when we're drilling or we're training or whatever, if you get pushed up against the wall, man, you can just keep working. Yeah, you know, I, I you like You should. It. You should. Like, Sometimes when we spar, we, we, we end up going that way. You know, if, some, if someone pushes you up against the wall, he's like, oh, time out, you know. Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, stop. Time out. Guy that's assaulting me. Mm -hmm. Just let's move over here. That'll be, you know, way more yeah. polite. Man. So Gary Tillman, the I mean the guy that gave him it it was a good first opponent. Um, Gary looked better, and I mean he was he had he was bigger, he was he was stronger, he was more physically imposing than that guy. Um, I I don't recall his name. I've never seen his opponent before in my life. Uh, but uh, Gary outclassed him, and it was his first fight. But I'm sure just the caliber of training partners he has, and he's been working with. He came in there super confident, just kind of playing around, and yeah, um, it was cool. It, it it was cool to see that he was already able to get to that kind of you know flow state for being so new at the sport, right? Um, you know, you're not going to give him a world beater for his first opponent. Like any smart promoter is not going to do that. Like you want to be able to build this guy up. He's already got a huge following between jujitsu and all his like, you know, social media exploits and all that, right? So. It's smart of one FC to give him somebody that's you know not exactly the best guy in the world. You want to you want to build the guy up. It's like look at these boxers that have they're, they're like thirty something and two or yeah, they've had the records a lot. Well, they they look who they fought. Like, they got a lot of tomato cans in there. Yeah, I'm not saying that's what this guy was, but I'm saying like you know it's 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 good that he went out there. He got enough. He, he fought a guy who it wasn't too much of a danger for him. And then he actually, the submission guy wins by not TKO, right? Yeah. He got a high amount and just finished him off. Like, psh, 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 psh. Good. Yeah. Good. It was, it was cool. I mean. Your fellow uh, Brunswick, New Jersey. Well, you're from Tom Server, but uh, your fellow Jersey guy. He's not from New Brunswick. He's from Forked River, isn't he? I don't know. Fucking, I, I, I talked to his, like, his, I think his like, sister and his mom were over at EBI when I was there. And I'm oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure they said they were in Forked River or something. Have they all relocated to, to LA or do they still live out there in Jersey? Oh. Well, I really don't know. Uh, they were they were in town for that. Okay, so most likely probably still in Jersey. We, we were uh, we were online for the uh, they had a co-ed um, 
restroom at the Orpheum Theater, and uh, his mom was, you know, joking like, "Well, in New Jersey, there's a men's room and a women's room. This is weird." <laughs> And, uh, welcome to, you know, she just made the comment and I was, she was like right in front of me in line or right in back of me in line, something like that. And, uh, I just said, well, I'm, I'm from Tom's River. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting to use the bathroom. But she's like, oh man, fucking river, Tom's River, blah, blah. They're really friendly. It was cool. It's like, like, what are you doing here? Are you, she asked if I was, you know, on their, uh, their team, if I trained at, you know, Ocean County Jiu Jitsu, whatever it's called. Mm. No, no. I'm, I'm up in NorCal. I'm just here for the, here for the event here for the event but um yeah he killed it that was uh that was the ebi where he beat um what's his name uh wagner Hosha. mr wagner Hosha. yeah was like, that was that was a very long event it was it was fun uh, boogeyman you know he won the uh the welterweight you know ebi uh combat jiu-jitsu title mm-hmm. but the wagner Hosha matches there it was overtime every time it was uh, one of those grappling podcasts said something like it was a two hour event and a two and a half hour of uh, Wagner Hosha overtime. Damn. So, which fight was the combat jiu jitsu one where Wagner used his freaking palms? And, like, I think he really took the back and got his hooks in and just freaking palm strike the guy and broke his jaw? Something like that? Was it, that was the one where it was a knockout, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Dude, what? The, the next combat jiu jitsu event is it's like title versus title, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, but I'm excited. It is. Um, it is. So here, look it up. You got the, you uh-huh. got the gimmick right there. Mm-hmm. Name is iPad. We got to name it. Yeah, guys, I love I, Patty. So I use this iPad every day at work to listen to Bloomberg Tech for business and finance news, or on the, you know, just knowing my building rapport with my clients and knowing what's going on in their industries. But in the evenings, just like the Ninja Realtor. I transform into grappler and fighter man, so I got to bring out the uh, UFC fight pass. You you, um, you Purell that thing, you know, right? This thing? Yeah. I I use a, a little wipe. Okay. It's not Purell, but yeah, it's 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 like disinfects and it's like for like um, electronic. It's you can like, do it on your phone. Well, it's computer. like it's like the book from that episode of Seinfeld, you know, because he couldn't return it because they knew it had been the bathroom. <laughs> they could just tell. <laughs> that's a great fucking show it's a wonderful show it's it's, it's one of the best shows ever yeah. it's about nothing me and my wife we're like I think in season 4 now and we, we, oh you're we, watching it now we're watching it now through Hulu oh. I got Hulu just for this bro Have you, do you watch his other show the comedians in cars getting coffee that I've heard great things we haven't watched yet so we're gonna watch that but I've watched all of Curb Your Enthusiasm ironically before I watched all of Seinfeld it, so it, that's w- funny because it's about him right yeah exactly <laughs> so uh larry david is the man you know speaking of prejudices right so we're gonna finish seinfeld i'm gonna watch kirby enthusiasm with the wife so she can watch i'm gonna watch it with her even though i've watched this and then we're gonna go to that one it's the comedies and carbs and co- cars and coffee the, I, I like the howard stern episode so i'm a howard stern fan i enjoy howard stern that one we're gonna watch next so should i check ebi 16 is that what we're searching for yeah whatever the next one is okay This is some good radio. Hey, Jamie, why don't you put that up on the big screen? We have a Jamie? No, no, we, don't, Jamie. we don't have a Jamie. We used to have a fucking... He had another kid. Hey, Asian camera boy. It's a, it's one Asian, or two. It's a, Asian cameraman number one. It was Asian sunny. cameraman number one. Actually, I think we upgraded Jason because he, he did something good. I don't remember. That sounds all funny. You Where's have, Sonny, by the way? No, that's him. Uh... Where are those? Yeah, no, no it hasn't happened yet. You're, you're pulling up replays. Let's go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia? Yeah, EBI. What, what, what did that say? Oh, you have the app? Hell yeah, bro. Is it EBI 16? Isn't that the next one? Yeah. Eddie Bravo. Invitation. Yeah, right there. Ah. Uh, So while you're looking that up, uh, there it is. There it is. Next one. Next one. Is it fifteen? No. So clearly we can see that it happens in two to three month increments. <laughs> so would would it safe to say uh, a- late April, early May? Yeah. Eh, whatever. We'll find. It. Anyway, they're, they're doing yeah. a title for title match, or it it's for the welterweight title. The other guy's moving up. I want to say it's. 
Who's the, so is Wagner Hosha the uh, the other combat jujitsu champion right now? Yeah, I think. Man, I should have I should have done some research before. Yeah, well, whatever. Um, anyway, the uh, funny thing I've been sort of following a little bit, a little lot of it is um, Ronda Rousey's transition into oh, yeah. the world of professional wrestling. Yeah. Um, have you have you seen any of her stuff on YouTube? Or uh, I did. Yeah, I saw it on Bleacher Report. How uh, she just like walked in with her freaking her leather jacket and like picked a fight with some other chick i don't know that I, i'm assuming you would know who she is oh well it's it's the story they've been kind of building for two years now it's the the uh one of the owners of the company it's vince mcmahon's daughter and mm-hmm. uh the the coo of the company is like they're they're doing a tag team match but okay it's um obviously she has a judo background but yeah. she comes off really timid um, she's just kind of hurt from what happened. No, I just don't. I think she's really, really shy. Huh. Like she's she comes off really nervous on the mic. Um, you know that stuff's less about you know going out there and being a real amateur wrestler and more about like theatrics and the show and you know yeah. being loud and uh, speaking up and you know telling a story. Um, so it's I don't know. It's uh. She's getting a little better, but uh, the, uh, the the mic stuff is kind of um, it's taking some time. You know, they, the UFC really messed up with that. I felt bad for Amanda Nunez. The next, the last fight, they they seldomly talked about her. It was generally about Ronda coming back, and I know they got to they got to do their thing, right? I get it. I get uh, marketing and all that jazz, but it's I don't know. They kind of blew her up a little bit too much. And Who, Amanda or Rhonda? Rhonda. You know, they suddenly talked about Amanda. Everything so, was uh, Rhonda and her mansion in the Hollywood Hills, Mulholland Drive. Ready to come back with my man, Travis Brown. Travis Brown. Yeah. Hoppa next to me, you know? It was just it was a little too much. Did you... Uh, so I passed you a link to a podcast last week. It was Chael Sonnen on Talk is Jericho. And at around minute 51, this is a podcast that was released about a week ago. And uh, so to recap, and uh, it's it's not really a quote necessarily, but uh, I'll recap. Um, Basically, what Chris Jericho, who's a pro wrestler and other stuff, rock guy, and Mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's just a whole bunch of stuff throughout pop culture. He's like, whatever, he's he's a pro wrestler, but he's done other shit since. Mm -hmm. It's been in Sharknado, so clearly he's a movie star too. <laughs> there you go. What wasn't that other blonde chick in that Tara Reed? Everyone is in yeah. that Sharknado. You might you're, you're, Sharknado. You're probably in one of them. Actually, that'd be really cool because then I have an IMDb. That'd, that'd be, be pretty cool. dope. I want to be a Sharknado. Get at me. So, Hollywood. so Chris Jericho basically said, uh, you know, so Ronda Rousey. So she was, uh, she was on this this huge tear, and then all of a sudden, after she lost that fight, the next fight, she was like a shell of her former self. Like she wasn't the same again. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he's just like, what do you think happened? You think that cha- the, the loss just changed her? And Chael Sonnen said, well, let me break it down for you. And he, the truth is, it's it's not very nice, but I'm just going to tell it anyway. He goes, the truth is, Ronda was never very good. The rest of the girls were just worse. Ah, interesting. And that judo was, to say it politely, like terrible as a base for mixed martial arts. And no one, you know, has ever not just not been a champion, but not even been like a contender, like a, you know, a threat for a championship in mixed martial arts. And no high school even considers judo to be like, there's no judo in high school. Like, that's how like low he believes that judo is when, you know, that's how low, you know, like little he thinks of it when it comes to mixed martial arts. I thought that was kind of brutal. I thought the part about Ronda was, the way he said it wasn't great, but the level of women's mixed martial arts when Ronda was coming up versus the level now, the level now, there are these women are way more, you know, way better. Yeah, I can see but that. The game's she, better, better. But uh, he was basically saying before, if you were a woman in mixed martial arts and you wanted to, you know, be a contender for the title, he's like, okay, sign up. Here you go. Yeah. There you go. Like, that's all it really takes. But, I mean, it's it's harsh. Um, the level is much uh obviously 
higher now. It's much more competitive now. There's freaking some amazing women out there, not you know, and all throughout sports, but you know, MMA specifically. And you know, Ronda was Ronda was the one that got Dana White's attention and got all the publicity and did a lot for yeah. women's sports in general. Yeah. But uh, if you, if you look at some of the women now, you, you see through in the UFC and Invicta as well. World beaters. There's some killers out there. Manny Nunez. Cyborg. So Cyborg and um, is that is that fight inked yet? Cyborg and who? And who? Amanda. Oh. I don't think so because what 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 class would they fight in? So I don't think Cyborg can go down to one thirty five again. Do you think that Amanda Nunes would have uh, Nunes would have the same? You know, uh, do you think she'd have a problem going to one forty five? No wonder. I don't know. I think she can. I think that'd be an awesome fight. I I I think if they if they were to fight, it would be like much more readily at one forty five than it would be at one thirty five because. What happened to Cyborg at that last weight cut? Remember when she had to take all those, apparently all those roids or whatever to because well, of. Well, what was it though? Was it diuretic? Was what was it? I don't know, but she said it was because the fucking brutal weight cut. So that because of that, she goes, "I can't fight at one thirty five again. They made me do this. I, I'd rather do it at catch weight at one forty. So I don't see her going back down to one thirty five personally. And what you said about Chael kind of makes sense now that I think about it. I can see where he's coming from. I mean, he may have been a little bit more brutal about it. No, he was. So if, if you if, if you guys want to listen to what I'm talking about specifically, go to about fifth, minute fifty one of the Talk Is Jericho podcast, mm -hmm. and it's the uh, the Chael Sonnen uh, episode from. I want to say about a week or two. Like he's been on there, I think, a few times, but it was from last week or so. So sometime in the end of mm -hmm. March 2018, check out Talk Is Jericho podcast, Chael Sun, and minute 51 onward, and you'll, you'll hear the conversation kind of. And his uh, his critique of, you know, Ronda and, you know, her, her post-loss uh, career in MMA moving forward is, uh, you know, it, it, it was – pretty brutal and um you know whether or not it's it's accurate i mean it's it, 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 it's there's certainly something to be saying said about the uh, the level of women's mixed martial arts now as compared to like the beginning of the 2010s yeah i mean and she did medal at the olympics right which is freaking awesome she did medal in beijing but let's remember and this is from you know training with one of our double black belts so it's a black belt in judo and a black belt in jiu-jitsu um a lot of the takedowns that we work are very centered around, let's say, grips on the uh, the gi, grabbing the lapel as well, for example, with the throws. And then you think of it in an MMA setting, right, where you don't have that, you take that away. I can kind of understand a little bit of what he's talking about, about how judo maybe isn't like as great as, let's say, jujitsu, wrestling, or even Muay Thai for MMA, transitioning over. And maybe the talent wasn't really there compared to now. Some of that can make sense to me. I feel like as a base, if we're talking about, you know, just the level change at all, mm -hmm. that I would rather build from a wrestling background. Yeah, uh, for, you know, if I wanted to start somewhere, I would, I would rather start with wrestling. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, yeah, me too. But then again, uh, you know, who's coaching you? What's the goal? Um, there's, there are plenty of, uh, you know, wrestling t style takedowns in judo. There's a Japanese name for the single and double leg and every variation and everything in between. And, you know, judo is not just, you know, grabbing somebody by the collar and elbow and uh, doing this, uh, you know, ipum throw or something, right? There's, there's a lot more to it. It's just the techniques, you know, you pick to sort of think of when you think, oh, this judo is this or this. It's, 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 a, yeah. it's a, it's a very deep, uh, set of techniques that's uh, got a long history, but then again, I mean, what you traditionally would see in jujitsu or judo versus like wrestling competition, those types of throws and controls and things like that, like I feel like it, you know, pretty much what everyone's seeing is the, the the striking is something between like you know American kickboxing or Muay Thai uh, with the uh, the hands you know, coming from, uh, you know, Western boxing, um, wrestling, and then jujitsu for the submission stuff Yeah, is, uh, is pretty much been 
the the recipe right and cross training and just excellence across all of it and along with that like olympian level cardio and conditioning yeah and without that pretty condi- much and without that conditioning like good luck because all that techniques for fucking nothing if you're laying there gassed dude that's why i've been working on freaking running so much and jb jake tells me that i i shouldn't do that and i should work more on the technique but I told him, I said, listen, I'll do that too, but I gotta work on the running. And he says, I don't work on any cardio ever. I've never had that issue before. And I told him, Jake, listen, I don't know, maybe you were made in a super lab or something, but for me, just like what John Chun said, fatigue is the worst thing. Fatigue is your biggest enemy. And I can tell you from my other tournaments that I would get gassed out. I mean, obviously it comes with experience as well, but I would get gassed out a lot more. And now, I mean, I still have a lot more room to go. But I think I've my endurance and my calmness has gotten better. So the running, I mean, a, any athlete, mm-hmm. you know, you, you should you should be fine running. I mean, you, running should be part of it. But cardio is also very action specific. Mm-hmm. So it's if you're competing in jujitsu matches and jujitsu tournaments and things like that, having as many hard matches and just rolling as as much and as hard and uh you know the the interval the exp- the, the the ability to explode and then uh you know it's it's very action specific so yeah running's great do it if you're already doing it cuz you you want to have that cardio capacity like you want your heart to be able to pump blood to yeah. you know efficiently and all that but you know just being able to go out there and rolling hard and um doing as many rounds as you can yeah, that's that's true. I mean, having those actual matches, right? Having those super at, hard matches that at the pace, at, at a competitive pace, pace yeah, yeah. against you know real resistance and um, it's having, like a simulation, right, of the actual tournament. It's not a simulation. I mean, it is what it, it's. It's exactly that. It's yeah. it should be that close. I mean, that you got to have hard training, and otherwise, when you go out there, and if it's if something's a shock, then the, the training something went wrong it, it, there you shouldn't be surprised i mean unless it's some some new, new move you've never seen before like but just going out there and if it's the pace or it's the pressure or it's uh you know you should be able to weather the storm right yeah it's like there's going to be a lot of situations where you just get some mashed but that should be okay you should be able to keep your calm and going out and just training with people that are gonna maul you it's good for you that you keep your compo- then getting tapped a lot and you get tapped a lot in training great yeah and hopefully that translates to not getting tapped in competition because you've seen that before you've experienced that level of pressure right mm-hmm. it's, yeah it's you know every once in a while it's it, it, it you know you, you know you're either the hammer or the nail right you'd much rather be the nail in uh training yeah, yeah. i mean i think just i've been showing up so much and just trying to train and get better and better i do get tapped occasionally by, by the lower belts, but generally the ones that are doing the tap it is, it are the black belts and a few of the brown belts. But then here and there, like, I'll get another tap there and there. And, I, and it's just, I, I do have a kind of a funky style, but at the same time, I've been really trying to, to work on a lot of the defense. And, and I was I, I was talking to one of our um, one of our guys earlier today, and he's like, you know what, I don't think you, you go as hard as I do, and I think you should go harder, like when you train. And I say, well, you know, like, first of all, I appreciate you saying that. And there may be a little bit of truth to that. But I just want you to know that a lot of the time I let them put me in those situations because I want to work on these transitions that I'm actually working on and being able to break out of it, you know, and and um, and turning it around on them, basically, instead of just going freaking be smoked like buzzsaw all the time on my, my opponents. You know, I just, it's just not really... Yeah, yeah, there's a time and a place to sort of turn it up. And if you're preparing for something, I mean, like, it helps to train deliberately. I mean, I'll... Yeah. There's nothing taken away from that. 100%. You're right. But uh, at the same time, just sort of going apeshit to go apeshit, it's like... Uh it's the equivalent of just instead of going and having a drink after work going and you know just trying to get get your rocks off having a fight on the mat you know yeah guys that just go as hard as possible all the time it's like look what are you what are you doing (laughs) so there's actually a guy in our gym that did just this i sparred with him a few weeks ago on a friday this guy goes super hard right he comes out guns blazing and i don't i don't know why he has to do this you know but Anyway, I ended up kicking him 
you know, I got a pretty good liver shot on him, and he buckled his knees and went down, and uh, he left after that. And I kind of felt bad, right? Because I'm gonna spar with this guy a lot, but it's kind of like when you're gonna go hard with someone, like someone is gonna meet that, and eventually someone I feel like will get hurt, right? So there's like that fine line, right, where you're getting ready for competition, but at the same time, everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to do something. Let me t- let me tell you if. If we're working strikes, right, and you start punching me in the face, well, I'm going to get angry because I don't like to get punched in the face, and I'm going to hit you hard too. Or when we're if we're freaking grappling, right, if we're trying, you're going to put me in a real. If you're going to cross face the ish out of me super hard, well, I might get upset with that, and I might try to you know come back at you. We're all like that. It's just human nature. But it's like these things kind of have to be expected, and I don't want to put all of my energy to prevent this guy from taking my back. When I can go, let's say at 50, 60 percent, let him take my back, and then from there, after he gets the hooks in, I can just be like, "All right, just like what you told me. You told me this after before my first tournament. You said if you get your back taken, remember to always focus on the arms before you focus on the feet, right? Hand fighting first, and then you address the the, the hooks, right? So it's like, all right, I'll let him get my back, and I'll and I'll be mindful of that, and I'll work the hand fighting, you know, and then I'll work out of that. So my point is, that I don't have to like get all of my energy to prevent this mount or prevent from getting my bat taken during training when I can allow it to happen. Not hundred percent give it to them, but you know, let it, and then work on the defense to counter back and get out of it. Yeah, it's you'll you'll have guys that are like they have their comfort zone, and they'll only go to this one thing. Like that's what they do every single class. Yeah, and. But then, if they're if they're stuck, you know, if they're if they're expected to go in a different position, you know, against somebody else or like someone new comes in and like they're not able to get to their favorite, you know, their their comfort zone, you know what I mean? Like they're not able to have like their comfort food on the mat, and then mm. they're like all of a sudden you see that there's a big limitation because like they don't know that position. How are we gonna get better like that, right? You don't like when that happens in a tournament. What are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna fucking panic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like no one how to kind of chill and conserve energy sometimes because you can have somebody just like all over you and um sometimes you just got to weather the storm and protect yourself be like well this guy's on top of me right now and um well let's see i gotta keep him you know out of my out of out of my uh out of my neck here out of my collar and stuff and uh see if i can get him to commit a little bit too much up and you know bump and roll and we're good you know what i mean but if you panic it just sort of feeds that more if, it's an adrenaline if, dump like you told me right? adrenaline dump yeah. but like if someone can tell that you're um like emotionally compromised mm-hmm, <laughs> like mm-hmm. that you're like pa- kind of panicking it's just going to feed into it they're, they're, they're going to go for the kill even more so i uh i like that idea of game face just kind of having the same mm-hmm. facial expression all the time i don't um i, I try not to show any kind of uh, you know i try not to emote um when i'm training it it helps uh, you know mike prudencio you know he refers to his game face and uh just just having kind of like this blank kind of expression the whole mm. time um and pe- they don't know when you know if you're sweating or not you know if, if you're if they're you're this close to tapping they're not going to know yeah uh the other benefit is you know they're they, they you can just it's a confidence thing. Bro, that reminds me of my fellow countryman, Gegard Musasi. Yeah, like that. Like that. <laughs> like you never know. Like and yeah. I, I've had people think like, man, you, you look like bored or something, like just like this look of contempt yeah, on yeah. my face. And it's like, <laughs> no, it's not that at all. It's just something I've been doing forever. And uh it, it oh. what what it also does is normalizes my breathing. Okay. So I'm not like You're more calm, right? Because you know what my dad says? My dad says this is all back to sales. When like this, like like sometimes he watches MMA fights with me, right? And they're squaring up. He says, "This is all. Everything is related to sales to me." I'm like, "How do you see sales in this? What are you talking about? This has nothing to do with sales." This is what I tell him, right? And he goes, "Absolutely not." You see, that guy, one of them is smiling, and when he smiles, just like when I smile when I talk to my clients, it immediately puts me in a happier mood, and it it, it elevates my mood. That's basically what he's saying. And if you're angry, if you're stone faced, if you're you know. Um, frowning or whatever, then you're immediately going to get like more um, anxious, more more angry, and he said, and it's, you're just not going to appreciate it. You're going to use up a lot more of your energy opposed to the guy that's smiling. And I started thinking about smiling Sam Alvey. 
He's always smiling every time he's walking. I was like, what's up? You know, he's super excited, just living in the moment, really happy. And as I'm smiling when I'm talking to you right now, it's immediately just kind of. It's a biohack. Putting my mood, yeah. Total it's biohack. Like elevating my mood. And I'm like, fucking pop, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, if you're feeling down, you can just like, if you start like just really loud, if you speak kind of up and like, not, not down here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this isn't happy. Yeah. Happy's here. Like, uh -huh. I'm in a great mood. I'm in a great mood. Like, you say it enough times loud, it, 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 that, it just happens. Yeah. You are. They say tonality and body language, 80% uh, or 85% of a conversation. And I'm like, well, what's the, what's the, um, the 15 or, or 20%? The words. Yeah. The, the words are like a, th a fifth of the actual conversation oh, it, it's me looking at you it's making right it's it's the uh the body language that i use my hand gestures my excitement you read that a lot more than actual freaking words that i'm telling you that's crazy i mean because if you say something like this you're like thank you for watching the show but if you're like you are watching the greatest podcast in the universe ninja ninja Meridi, ninja Meridi, ninja Meridi. nima Meridi, the ninja realtor we'll blah, blah blah i didn't even have to say it right and i'm still saying it with charisma because i'm emoting and i'm saying it up here and i'm projecting but if i say it down here you're probably not going to think very much of it yeah. no it's it's like you know uh. daria from mt you know from beavis and butthead yeah, 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 yeah. it's really yeah. monotone and down uh -huh. but if you say it like this and you say welcome to the clint cronin show this is nima Meridi, the ninja yeah. realtor we're back in the house tonight and we're here to talk about the greatest jujitsu shit in the world and people are like that didn't make sense but we like it because you're here <laughs> with us and you're emotional and you're all fucking stoked yeah and people are looking for that like it's it's all about like the delivery the charisma like your connection right yeah, it's that yeah. connection shit you, you, you it's it's radiating right it's it's people like that people like to be around like as they say misery loves company right there's a guy in my office he's a newer agent he was sits in one of the cubes so every time i walk out of my office and i'm going to get some coffee or a green tea um, I hear him, right? And he's prospecting. And I love this guy. I, I want him to do well. I've actually known him for about 15 years. He's one of my buddies. But he's super monotone like this when he talks to people. And I told him, I said, listen, if I was a prospect and I heard you talking, that would put me to fucking sleep. It's so boring when you talk because you're super monotone. And I'm like, the words are super valuable about what you're saying. You definitely have your value proposition there. The problem is... You're super boring to listen to. Oh, nice. You're super boring to listen to. You know, so it goes back to what we're talking about, about the tonality and just like, you know, busting that out. So with fights, it's always great to just be excited, right? Like you're super happy to be present. With me, I got a few affirmations that I say that kind of help me keep my, my, my mind sharp and just be like, hey, I'm here. I'm not going to play their game. I'm going to do what I do. Even if they go super hard on me, I'm not going to try to match that because that's not my style. I'm going to do with what Nima style is, right? And I'm going to be confident with it. <laughs> she immediately went right in my heart. And then, yeah, I mean, hey, shout out to the one first need. Though. What's up, Allegura? Um, you know, and that's that's just my style. And every time I, I roll with someone who's really putting a lot of pressure on me, I'm going to want to match that pressure on them. You know, I'm going to want to smash pass, fucking um, – Cross, cross face them, you know what I mean? And be more aggressive, but I'm going to do it my way. And I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong. I mean, you have so much more experience than me. So this is kind of like uh, a question that I'm posing to you. But my thing is, you got to do what, what, what works well for you. At least this is what I think, right? And what I've been training for the years that I've been in jujitsu and what I'm most comfortable with and not try to match them. Because if I try to match them, I'm kind of like in uncharted territory, you know? And I don't think I'll do as well. Yeah, you're supposed to, you know, play your own game, right? It's it, it's it's like if you're constantly following, following, following. Mm -hmm. What's the view look like, right? Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you, you, like how's the view? You're looking at the back of the person's head. You're looking, you're looking at ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. At, at some point, you got to pass. Like you got to do your own shit. Like, you, like they always say, like be first, yeah. be first. All this stuff. Like it, it matters. It means something. Yeah. I mean, it's a fight and. It, <laughs> If, if you're not trying to impose yourself in the fight, like, what you doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could always sneak around and, like, try to p pull the ha Hail Mary, but ultimately it's a fight. Like, you don't always want to win by technicality or by, like, an advantage. It's a fight. Right. I mean, it's like you said. What do you always say? This is fight school. This is fight school. 
Yeah, like it's sometimes it's hard to get up. I mean, the 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 nature of it, the scoring. It, it, people don't like the the old IBJJF rules, whatever. Um, you know, it's not realistic. Blah blah blah. I don't care. It's fucking most of the people that sit there and critique jujitsu and it not being like a good self defense art are fucking fat and useless and don't train anyway. Adelaide Bird, huh? <laughs> that coach, uh, that terrible coach. Oh, I don't know what the fuck that is. Adelaide, she's the woman that. I mean, she, um, oh, is not that- to say that women, I, listen, we don't want backlash on the Clint Cronin show where I'm not saying women that can't coach. There's just one specific woman. And there's a lot of men that are probably like this too. Oh, is but this the lady woman- from the Instagram where she like disarmed the person with the gun or whatever? I don't know. Okay. That may have been her, but this is the fucking bat that freaking had the Canelo and, and triple G fight. She fucking ruined that and other fights as well in the USC. Her name is Adelaide Bird. She's terrible. Is she a referee? Yeah. Oh. I, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. She's not a referee. She's a judge. She's a oh, judge. okay, okay. She's oh. a terrible judge. Okay, okay. I don't I don't know the fuck that is, right. but I oh, mean. So then they got the Tony Weeks, the Sal, whatever, whatever, and Adelaide Bird. She's one of them. She does boxing and she does MMA. Okay. She's always been shit. But apparently she's a very nice woman. She just should not be referee. There's, lot, there's lots of nice people that are bad at their jobs. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. She's just really, really bad. I, I, I watch his boxing match. I'm like, are we watching the same fight? Lee? I mean, you're, you're supposed to have more experience than me. Are we watching the same fight? <laughs> I was, I was watching, uh, you know, you just cruise around through YouTube and then all of a sudden you're on some random channel you've never been to before. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And this one guy, he makes a lot of top 10 lists and this was the top 10 people that should not have fucked with professional fighters. <laughs> <laughs> and it was these, you know, and one was the the one where like a, some guy came and challenged Josh Koscheck over at uh, old UFC headquarters, and uh, you know he put on gear, signed a waiver, and just got the shit kicked out of him a couple times. And Josh laid into uh, him like he could have been meaner, uh, you know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, who else was it? Did you ever see that? Did you see ever that, v- that video where that guy called out Rogan to ju- for jujitsu? Oh, this is forever ago. This, uh, you know, you can tell how old it is. He's like, he's like, like well, he had first, hair, he had hair, <laughs> but he he found him on MySpace. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, he talks shit about Joe Rogan through MySpace. This is back when Joe was a brown belt um, through 10th Planet. Uh-huh. I don't even, I don't know if he even had his uh, Jean-Jacques black belt yet, but yeah, Joe Rogan is Put the beat down. Very ex- <laughs> he's a very experienced martial artist. The dude is, he's not that tall, but what is there is fucking pretty stocky, man. He's got oh, yeah. some fucking muscle mass on him, and he knows jiu-jitsu. He's fucking... He beat the crap out of this guy. It was, it was an old last video. You see, hey, you see Rogan when, when he had Vinny Shorman, that Muay Thai coach, Vinny Shorman. So, show. I, so when I, I was driving back from LA the other day, I had that on, but uh-huh. um, I started losing reception. Uh-huh. So I, uh, I, I wound up not listening to the the end of it. But it was the it, the one guy was a kickboxing champion. The other guy was like a hip, hypnotist, like kind of make mental coach. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, so look at look at Rogan strikes, man. Not bad for fifty, yeah. I remember, Don't remember, sleep on Joe Rogan. Remember when he was showing the spinning, the turning sidekick to uh, to GSP? Yes. Yeah. 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 I do. It, it was. It's no, not it's... a bad sidekick. It was not a bad sidekick. No, no and, it's not. Dude, I, he used to. I mean, I didn't know this. You, you, you've known of Rogan, and I'm, I'm assuming he's like met. a national Taekwondo champion. Yeah, near the Boston champion. days, right? Yeah, yeah. He was super good. At, you know, I got I got into Rogan way later in life, but um. This guy, even in striking, look. I mean, the, the fact that he has a black belt in jiu-jitsu, and I don't, I don't know how often he trains striking. Look at this. This is crisp. Well, he, this is not bad at he, all. He was a very high-level, uh, you know, martial artist early on, mm-hmm. and then he's trained the whole time. I mean, he got into UFC as a fan. Like he was, he was he's been working for him since the nineties. Yeah. So that he has good strikes is like is not at all surprising. Um, and look, look who he is. Like, he's friends with. Like, he's everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like his job is to basically watch the the best fighters in the world. Right, that HGH just look good on you, bro. <laughs> uh, is that what he's doing? He does. Uh, he he says that he he got into it after forty. Was it GH or testosterone or what? Um, I don't know how, what are like the subtypes, but it's, he says he just says HGH. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh. He said that he's been on it after forty. He got on it, and he said, "Now I'm fifty years old, and I've been trading like I'm in my early 30s. He looks like he's in his thirties. It looks yeah, great. Right. It looks fucking great. I'm like, I'm about to get on that. Hey, can you imagine? You gotta get your pop. You gotta get your little emblem on that too in your home gym, bro. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need some logo merch. Mm. I've got all the uh, all the mock-ups ready to go. I'm just uh, 
I'm just waiting for the print shop. Got uh, got some T-shirts and jujitsu gi patches, and probably some stickers coming too. Nice, along with dude. It. I need a, I need a patch for my next tournament. Hopefully, you'll get it by then. Yeah, I think I think the first run's going to be pretty small. Mm-hmm. Um, so the crew, the crew will get them. Uh, we'll give the some podcast listeners a chance to get some and you know stuff like that. But I want to keep these batches kind of small. Um, I, you know, I don't want to be stuck with a bunch of them. But <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Um, oh, you're doing, you're doing the whole show roll business method, huh? We will release a certain amount, right? The demand will skyrocket, but the supply will stay the same or decrease. And let the market drive it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't know nothing about that. I, just, <laughs> I know that uh, there's this. There's this great brand uh, that's local here to the Bay Area called Want versus Need. Yeah. That um, you know. They, I like that segue. They produce a, a fine kimono, and uh, also their you know the shorts and rash guards and all that sort of thing are wonderful as well. This hoodie right here. Mm-hmm. I gotta. I gotta thank you know uh, the big time show supporter and. Um, you know, a uh, friend Al Lagura for hooking it up. This is a lovely, uh, it's like a heather gray uh, pullover hoodie by Want versus Need with like the contrast white drawstrings. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And, I wore my Want versus Need rash guard today. It was it was oh, lovely. Yeah. It was lovely, and yeah. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, full disclosure, I'm 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 I'm, 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 I'm part of the team there. I'm 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 I'm, I'm a Want versus Need athlete. <laughs> I actually wanted to, I'll be real, I actually wanted to pick up a new A&P gear uh, during the holidays, and I got that message from you um, right before Black Friday, I think it was. Yeah, it was on Thanksgiving. Oh, for the Illus, the Illus uh-huh. Swamp versus Need? That was, so, it's a lovely gear. I got super excited. I'm like, all right, cool, cool. Yeah, when I get home, I'll buy it. I didn't want to buy it on my phone. I'm like, because we were at a little one of my wife's friend's parties. I'll get, I'll get it when I get home. My mistake I made is I bought it after 10 o'clock, so I didn't get the rash guard that came with it. So I was like, damn it. Oh, you Because you were rocking that rash guard today and I was looking money. Oh, you, like, still didn't, oh, you, you, oh you still didn't get it? Yeah, but because of you, I was going to get the Albano Preto fit, but I went towards one for, ski, one for Sneed. So I got the the Illist and one for Sneed collab. And then after that, I also had to get the, the Noki matching outfit. I wound, up, I wound up actually uh, going to the um, – there's there's the, the, the place – they they alter clothes and so shit. Mm-hmm. Like anytime I have a you know a gi or and just like clothing in general, like that doesn't. Yeah, that's Travis Navaza. Um, anytime I have some gear that needs to be adjusted, whether it's like business or like even jujitsu related, they always hook it up. So and so, they're not that cheap. Is it called so and so? It's like so S E W and S O. I think I like that. They own words. I like that. I have. You know, patching up my geese and stuff like that. I, I should probably just get a sewing machine. Um, I don't know how to sew. I'd make a mess. Like, I'm not <laughs> the artist guy. Yeah. But um, I, ha- I had a pair of ripstop pants that were just like the absolute wrong size. They were, just, they were huge, like parachute pants. Mm-hmm. So I brought them over there. They're like, oh, you want to just put a patch on these? I'm like, yeah, but also. <laughs> and I was like, take an inch off here, take an inch off here, take an inch off here. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hold on, let me make sure we have the the right machine to to deal with ripstop or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure you do. It's fine. <laughs> I know you do. Um, bring in the inseam, make them shorter, make them like less balloon leg kind of whatever you want to call it, balloon legged. Yeah, it's like MC Hammer style. They were MC Hammer pants. They were. Uh, it was like an old Illiski I had, and I had all these want versus need patches. I'm like, we're just gonna convert this. <laughs> like, but um, hey, did, I, did you see that? The graphic about the um, the white belts like kit to jujitsu. No, it was a, it was on Instagram. It was on one of these things. It was really, really, really funny though. Kind of bums me out though that you didn't see it. So it's not going to be as funny because there's going to be a slight delay while I look for it. But this is something that I definitely have to look for. It's it's not quite as relatable because I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, it's a terrible segue. I know it was fucking terrible. I Let's know. see. I know that guy. He trains over with fucking some of my check mat friends. I know what to do here. I'm sorry. For oh, that's right. What what do I got coming up? This uh got the next few uh few guests coming up are gonna be cool. <laughs> oh, here we go. The jujitsu saved my life. Uh jujitsu changed my life starter pack. A white belt with a little Brazil patch. The shaka. The shaka, an acai bowl. Us. And the, saying us. <laughs> Yeah, the, Look at that's Elliot Marshall. Look at Elliot Marshall. 
That's pretty legit. Yeah. He was loving it. Look at that. It's too true. <laughs> it is. Yeah, you have to. It's funny, too. Like, that acai bowl is uh -huh. probably like a thousand calories and so much sugar. It's, uh, it's by the time you add all that shit to it, it's basically an ice cream sundae. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, it's funny, man. Every, <laughs> it's cool. They get stoked about it still. It's cool. Like, like just figuring all this stuff out, figuring out, oh man, Brazil is this awesome country. And, yeah. you know, it's, girls and the big asses and beaches and the, yeah. the music's different. Obrigado, Deus. And, and then they got these, uh, this other martial art where they're doing cartwheels and dancing kind of, but you don't really get it. And oh, weird. Yeah, man. It's cool that they're stoked about Brazil. It's cool. They're stoked about jujitsu. And it, you know, it's, it's neat. Cause when you get into it, it's people usually go from being like not very in shape to getting like kind of ripped and having the six pack. Mm -hmm. Then by the time they get a purple belt, they're all fat. So they realize like they were working five times harder than they had to. I'll be like yelling. Like, I just said, I just move your hips that way. That's how you always told me, right? When you said, "Remember, when you get to that stage, stop missing warm ups. Don't think that you're too good to miss warm ups." Then. Yeah, do the warm up. Yeah, because then you're gonna get fat and, and then you, get injured. You know, it's cool. Like you get even more fat. If jujitsu ever starts seeming like it's a routine thing, I invite you to attend a seminar. Um, go compete. Um, this it, they're just the small things to reinvent. Or like take a private lesson with somebody like you look like you like you admire like you like somebody that you always wanted to go and travel to and train go and train with like yeah like mix it up a little bit um especially if you feel like and you're like oh man i'm plateauing like no you're not you're just not trying new shit you are stop being lazy work harder mm -hmm. um this so this weekend it's gonna be pretty cool i'm gonna be going over and uh training with uh some friends we got like joao assis uh doing a little seminar there and then right after we've got um, Tess Casey, Tess Covet, and uh, Judy uh, Gomez. Uh, they both competed at Pan Am's. Two uh, awesome black belt ladies from here in the Bay Area. They, 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 they go to Open Mat, right? I think I've seen them. There. Yeah, they, they they they've been kind of in the Bay Area training here. They've been kind of staples in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, both are awesome competitors. Tess and uh, Christina Barlon have had all, like many many battles, like super fights over the years. So. Uh, both super cool ladies. Tess got golden pans in her division, I believe. Uh, Judy got silver, so it's going to be really cool. Going to have them on. Um, so right, like it was basically a seminar. Them, they're going to be coming over, dropping in the studio over here, and going to going to you know put down some uh, some magic for the crew out here. Podcast listeners, they'll be in for a treat. Um, and soon coming up uh, this summer, uh, I just uh, I got the Kataro guys, so the Jiu Jitsu belt guys. Um, finest jujitsu belts in the land um they, they they they're made in the united they're made in the usa and uh it's 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 really great workmanship like all my belts are kataro um you know want versus need will be coming out with some soon too so i'll be it, rocking those but in the meantime uh kataro they they and they they're handmade to your specification um is that that the one in the bathroom? The original black belt is that a guitar one? So that's the newest ones they started making. That's actually the uh, it's a gi weave belt. So it's made of it's it's new. So it's still not really broken in. Okay, because I felt I'm like, damn, this is nice. Yeah, it's it's made of gi weave material. The, uh, the all I can do is touch. Just like that. The, the the belts that we have um, for like the the black belt promotions, they're, they're like the satin black finish, like the 1.75s with embroidery, like, and you can even have like a custom logo on it. The, the cool part is. They also do stuff for like breast cancer awareness month, uh, just like the want versus need with the gi. Mm -hmm. They have a, um, a belt. So, you know, the black belt has a red, uh, you know, rank bar, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's one you can get from them with a pink rank bar where some of that money oh, goes for breast cancer awareness yeah. uh, stuff. Um, and then they also have a, an autism awareness month, uh, variant belt where it has like that puzzle kind of logo mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, autism awareness. So you can get a belt with that on there and some of that, the proceeds from that go to autism awareness. Uh, you know, charities, that sort of thing. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's cool that it's a, it's another, uh, you know, American company that, uh, they make stuff by hand here. They send you a, a real personal, uh, you know, uh, they, they let you know when the, when the, the belt construction is starting. Um, and then when you get it, you get like a nice little personal message in there and, you know, it's, 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 it, it, they're real nice. Um, they're not all that cheap. 
their starter stuff. I mean, the cheapest belt you're getting out of them is I think like 40 or something, 40, 50 bucks. Mm. And you're getting up into like a hundred or two at the top end. I mean, that's like how much the Datsusara ones are, right? Kind of. Um, I was looking for for one of those for me. I wanted to get a Datsusara. We're, we're Datsusara this is another great company. They uh, they produce, you know, it's, 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 it's hemp. They're, it's it's hemp. Hemp is amazing fabric, and a lot of that cost goes into just the the legality behind just growing hemp and having imported from Canada and all that uh-huh. stuff. And uh, whether it's American grown or not, I'm not sure. But um, that's it's an amazing plant that has so much potential to do so much good. And I, I hope you it's know, four times stronger than cotton. I didn't know that. It is antimicrobial, and, uh, antifungal, and the uh, you know also like the number of like deaths that uh go into the uh, like so the production of just genes that are made out of cotton there's like a lot of deaths every year that go into that production pro- like for whatever reason but with hemp there's none apparently with this somehow the process you think it's because it's fair trade opposed to like sweat labor i, I don't even think of that i think it's that i think like it's just the process of like the removal of like the the seeds from the cotton itself and shit uh-huh. If I had to guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm probably just talking out of my ass because I don't actually know. I'm repeating something I think I heard somewhere else, mm-hmm. like most people do. Yeah. Right? Most people. <laughs> At least you're not saying, no, it's the truth. I, no. I heard it from somewhere. And it's cool if I'm, I'm wrong too. Like, stop, totally. you can correct me in the comments. It's fine. But like, it's like most people on YouTube, it's like they're not road scholars. <laughs> they have cameras and they yeah. just talk loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. You guys don't get your news from Facebook too. Come on. What he might, a lot of people fucking do, but um. Anyway, just this uh, I, I think I've already plugged it enough, but uh, you know, big shout out and thank you to Want versus Need for all the continued support. I'll be uh, making my return to uh, competition jujitsu this at uh, the end of this uh, April this coming month at American Cup for uh, the illustrious BJJ Tour organization. My man's um, making his comeback. I'm, I'm, I've got a spot lined up at the top of a couple of those podiums and I'm, uh, look forward to seeing y'all from there. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, you know, the, we've got some great shows coming up. Uh, I've got, you know, uh, Michael Hillebrand's coming up soon. We're doing stuff there. Um, that's a 10th planet black belt from San Francisco gym. And then, um, like we got Dave Camarillo on the hook to come do one of these two little crossover things. Dude, that'd be cool. We've been talking about it for a while now. Um, yeah. We were we were meant to do something in March, but um, like that guy, for as much as he travels, I've been on the road every week too. Yeah. So um, just nailing it down. Come on, and, Dave. I love that guy. Dave, Dave's Position awesome. Position impossible. Come on, come on. I, so, I it was so I was like I was so stoked when he when he came out with his book. He like he hooked me up with a copy beforehand. Oh, nice. like before it was released. Like you know, hey, could you just you know read it and <laughs> let me know. So, I remember when I saw him at One World. That one day, it was like a last year was during a weekday that I came up there because he was going to come through. And then I was wearing that my Clint Cronin sh- uh, show sweater. Remember that? And <laughs> yeah, he comes awesome. up to me and he looks at it and he looks at me and he looks back down. And then he looks at you. He's like, you got, you got sweaters now or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, man. I was pretty really stoked about it, man. That was funny. Dave's awesome, man. Like, uh, it, they're just cool people, man. Yeah. They're great martial artists. Like you learn so much from them. Um, him, Matt Darcy, and like that whole GJJ, the whole gorilla family. Like Grandma's boy. Cool guy, man. Cool. I love JT. Philosophy grappler. Dude, spell check. Is this still spell check to me? Um <laughs> man. And I don't know. It's you know, all, all those guys dating back from like the old AK and uh Hillsdale and stuff, like everybody's at different gyms now, and it's like at first, I was like, "Why do you leave here? Why do you go there?" I'm like, "Cause that gym's closer to his fucking house. Yep. <laughs> the South Bay's big. People move. People get jobs at different places. And when I first started jujitsu in this area, there was like three gyms <laughs> that covered like an 80 mile stretch right. or something. It was yeah, fucking yeah. hard. And I wound up moving closer to a gym to live, like to not have to deal with that commute. I'm- Killer, bro. I've bounced on. Job, I've bounced on like very like lucrative, lucrative jobs mm-hmm. because I couldn't get to training on time. So, you know, I, I know what it's like to uh, you know have to think about that work life balance and then like how how do we fit training in there? Oh yeah, because 100%. you need you need that buffer. You need that thing between work and home where you burn off that energy so you don't lay it down on your spouse, your significant other. That's so important. 
You That's that, so important. You need that buffer, man. Yes. You, need, you need to fucking dissipate that energy. So by the time you get home, when your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever is like, how was your day? Hey, check this out. Like they want like the abridged version, mm. but they don't want to hear you complain. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear a grown ass man complain. I told my dad that, that you said that, by the way. And that's so freaking true. Nobody wants to hear a grown-ass man. There's nothing no, more uh, unattractive than a grown-ass man who's sitting there thinking that the world is against them. You know, yada, yada, yada. Fucking world's smallest violin over here. You know what I mean? Believe me. it's Generally speaking, most of the shit you're going to be fucking complaining about is first world problems. All right. right. Number two, I tell my wife this all the time. I tell I said, wifey, we do three daily gratitudes every night. Before we go to bed, 11 p.m., three daily gratitudes, meaning what are the three things that you're happy for in your day? It doesn't matter how bad of a day you had. There's always a silver lining, right? So we, we do that every time. And ev- and she can tell you, every single time, I always say I had a great training session. I had a great training session. I made it to the gym. I saw, you know, I, I, I had some great roles. I saw my family because I, the one wrote homies, that's my family, you know. And then I'll go into, you know, yeah, I was working on some marketing things at work. That was great. And this, but I always start off and say, first and foremost, I had a great training session on the mat. So it just my point in saying that is to say that it makes me into a better person as it makes most of us into a better person. You come home, you're in a better mood. You're less agitated. You left it on the mat. That's why you call it the last honest job. It is the last honest job, man. Because by the time you get home, you're, all, you're not you're not thinking, oh, this guy is politicking me in the office. Fuck yeah. that guy in the office and fuck your office. I need a drink. I need this. Uh, oh, I need a Xanax. Whatever. The, you know. So no, all, all you're thinking about by the time you get home, you're sweaty, you're fucking half broken. Like your blood's going back to where it's going to go for the rest of the night. Mm-hmm. Your muscles are starting to let, you know, let go a little bit or tighten up, whatever's happening. All you're thinking about is some water, a shower, and some food. And I don't yep. care what order you do them in. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life, but all yeah. I'm telling you is like those are the essentials. Yeah. The fuck with everything else. Like if you like that's all you're thinking. And if, if you didn't train that hard to where you feel like you earned that meal, go back and train harder. Yeah. Like I that's the worst thing, like going and knowing like you could have done more and you didn't, and like mm-hmm. you feel like you really didn't break that sweat. Like you really like you know what I mean? Oh yeah, dude. Let me tell you something. That salmon burger and sweet potato fries hit the spot today. Because I know I train hard. There you go. I got my salad bowl from Chipotle. There you <laughs> it's go. Like it's Sweet it's bro. it's literally salad and meat. Yeah. And uh And you're such a freaking stud. You taught after you trained, and by the time you got home and you know got the mics warming up and everything, you only got had like three, four bites out of that thing. I was watching you. Oh, uh, you know, it's 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 fun for me, man. It's like it's it's is is uh as cool as it is to go and, you know, teach and stuff. Uh for me, uh, it's just it's it adds refinement mm-hmm. and it 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 gives more because like the more students to stick around and get better, like the more we get better because you know we we've got some guys you know up and coming competing a lot. They're really excited. You know, David's doing a great job going out and you know you know getting everybody out there and motivated on the mat and everything in the competition scene, mm-hmm. and that just makes the gym better, man. It makes it feel like it's like more of a team, more of a family. So you know, just contributing to that and contributing to the to the community and you know deep down at the bottom you know the, the bottom line is it, it is all about community and like yeah and, and being able to add to that like my my bit of it even when i'm hurt it's like okay let me double down and teach more okay well I'm, yeah. I'm feeling a little bit better now like let me go out there and you know get my damn wind back in my lungs and go go compete myself that's why we have such an awesome team at aka sunnyvale i mean shout outs to one world i mean i'm so fortunate that we're, we're under the one world umbrella which is under the the gorilla um, umbrella but for being such a small gym as we are at one world sunnyvale i'm sorry um aka sunnyvale half of the mat think about the percentage of us people who who compete that are on the mat that it's significantly high and we have guys like like you who I was competing at um, at US Open. Remember BJJ Tour? You drove all the way from Vegas to coach me, which thank you oh, again American for that last Cup, year. American Cup. America, uh, no, no, it was All Stars. All Stars. All Stars. All Stars. Yeah. You came all the way from Vegas. You know, David Mitchell's there all the time. The amount of of people that we have. I mean, look at Naga. Like two, three weeks ago. Yeah. That was like half of our roster. You know what I mean? I mean, that's you guys have done such an awesome job with motivating us. You, David, uh, Jake Bell. Jake Bell always talks about getting out there and competing and, and just seeing how you do. And he always tells me the mistakes you make in a competition, you'll never make again on the mat. 
uh, it, be- it makes you 10 times better as a jiu-jitsu practitioner. I mean, he always shows that into us. My point is that so many of us at that gym, at the uh, on our little team at that gym, and at that little gym, compete. And I think that's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's it, it's good. It's it's a good sign that there's that solidarity and that uh, you know guys want to just get better and uh, mm-hmm. they 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 want to kind of give back and do yeah. more. I mean, you could go in and just you know punch your card, go in, yeah. and do the minimum, you know, get your workout or whatever. But uh, you know, they, they, you want to push the envelope and you like that you want to be better and it, it gives back to the gym because the better you get the better your training partners get um it's just it, it raises the bar for everyone and i mean ultimately like that's what you you what you want right yeah yeah and for listen for, for having 400 square feet of of mat let's give or take that's all we have right i mean having on many days we'll have you we'll have vu and we'll have jake on the mat at the same time that's not too shabby and you guys all have a different style. You guys are all black belts, but you guys all have a different style of teaching. And then we just get to be the sponge that absorb that. Like, all right, Clint emphasizes this. Jake, you know, emphasizes that. Vood emphasizes this. And we could just get in there and take all that in, man. It's super awesome. And it's it's fun working with all you guys. And, uh, you know, it's you guys get better. It makes us better because, you know, you can't just be a black belt and chill. Like, you no. can't just sit there and get fat because, like, you know, you're supposed to cultivate a student base that ultimately like will be better than you. But if you're not, if you're not constantly raising the bar and constantly improving yourself at some point, they're going to pass you. And then what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like they're supposed to whatever, you know, you're going to get old and shitty eventually, but you know, drag that out a little bit, make it harder. So, you know, I, I, I try to be as active as I can and try to, you know, just push the pace and go out there and seminars and tournaments and, you know, going and training with different people in different places and just, uh, finding, you know, the best guys I can to take some beatings from and, (laughs) you know, be able to give some back when I get home, Mm -hmm. you know, as best I can look for, but man, it's been 90 minutes now. It's late. You got a missus to go attend to, and I've I got a, a, a student body at 6.30 tomorrow morning, oh, a.k.a. Sunnyvale in Sunnyvale sad. in sunny, sunny California. Sunny, Sunnyvale, California. Sunny, sunny, but it's 6.30 a.m. It ain't that sunny yet. It, but it's not that cold either, so get your ass up. Come train. I'm there every Wednesday and Friday at 6.30 a.m., and uh, probably coming soon Friday nights at One World. Y'all make it happen. In Newark, California. So come out. Quality train. Otherwise, stick with us all spring, all summer long. The greatest podcast in all of space and all of time in the multiverse, bitches. This is the Clint Cronin Show. That is Nima Meridi. I'm Clint Cronin. I'm at Clint Cronin on Instagram and Twitter, but I don't use Twitter. Just come look at my sexy ass pictures. That was weird. Nima is a ninja, the ninja realtor on Instagram. Check him out. You need to buy a house or Mm -hmm. learn something about that blue belt competition scene. Nima's got you covered. Uh, And then thank you, as always, goes out to my sponsors, Want Versus Need. Love y'all. And, um, you guys subscribe and share. Click Cronin Show. Like, comment, subscribe, share, send it to a friend. Um, and uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, um, whatever. Uh, drop a line. Drop a line. I'm Clint at ClintCronin.com. Otherwise, it's at ClintCronin, as I said earlier. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening.